Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Fox again. So today I want to go ahead and give you guys the last League Start character that I have for Betrayal League. Now, this character that I'm currently playing was done in a private league. If you guys don't know what that means, basically everything in the game is going to have 20% more life in this build showcase. And all of my gear was crafted, so it's solo self-found. And all items have to drop white. So it's actually really good to kind of replicate how a league start would be, considering you have to craft all of your gear. So I'm just going to go ahead and show you my character's gear, run a quick map, explain the leveling process, and then I'm going to go ahead and uh, just talk a little bit more about the character. Now, the main thing to note is that this is a trickster. Um, it's not a jug. There are some pretty big differences between Juggernaut and Trickster Righteous Fire. So the first thing I want to state is I've never played Juggernaut Righteous Fire. I did play Berserker RF back in Harbor New League to 100. But the main key things to focus on is that as Trickster, you have the ability to drop a little bit and go phase acrobatics and acrobatics, and you can still have like a 7,000 life pool if you're interested in doing that. You have the ability to go Mind Over Matter if you choose to, just so you can have a little bit of more creativity with your character. And another thing to note is instead of being based on armor, you're more based on evasion. Uh, Jug has a bit less, well, a lot less damage, I would probably say, because of like the lack of cast speed and everything else, but is much more tanky towards physical mitigation. So you kind of just have different, a different gearing process, if that sort of makes sense. Um, so anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get this character started. So pretty standard, I'm at 83 fire res. The shield I've chosen to use is Ons Heritage. Um, Ons Heritage plus two fragility jewels gives us Onslaught, uh, if you look at the bottom text. Just to confirm, because I know it doesn't show up at the top, I want to show you guys. If you look at my movement speed modifier, it's 34%. If I pull out a minus endurance charge, it goes to 14. So, with that being said, uh, I don't have too high of a map showcase. I haven't even done tier 10 maps yet on this character. Uh, it's level 89. We are playing in hardcore, of course, so, you know, no deaths. Uh, let's go ahead and run this siege map with double beyond, because that's always fun. Now, this is with a carcass as well. Carcass is not really my ideal chest piece. Um, the reason why I'm using it is... Oh, that was Hoss. That's awkward. So don't ever stand on top of Hoss' face or you're going to get shotgunned like that. That's what happens when you have phasing. Nothing can block you. Um, <laughs> that was actually a little bit spooky. <laughs> Mr. Hoss was not nice when you stand on his face. That's actually a reason why I do want to go acrobatics and phase acrobatics is for scenarios like that. This is also with a level 19 Righteous Fire, not a level 20 RF. Level 20 RF would actually be a Radius Boost. Uh, radius Boost is better than Area Scaling, for example, because it actually increases the base amount that everything else scales off of. I don't think I've, like, ran this map in a long time. I don't remember, like, the layout of it. <laughs> yeah, I haven't, I haven't played this character in a little while, so that was my fault for just standing there like that. Where'd Bamoth go? I know there's, uh... There we go, we got him. Now, in the patch, there is the nerf to Ruby Flasks. The Ruby Flask nerf should not really hurt this build as much as, like, low-life builds, for example, that really try to scale their purity. Um, so you don't really have to worry too much about the Flask nerf. I'm, I don't really think it'll make that much of a difference, especially considering that you should not be utilizing... Well, you should not be, like, for this build, um, needing the Ruby Flask to run RF. You just use it for some added sustain because it's basically better than a Life Flask, right?
There's like so many bosses, dude. pretty much how the character clears. It honestly feels really smooth. Um, this is also playing with no AoE nodes at all on the tree. And this is with a carcass, but like I said, this is only a level 19 Righteous Fire. Um, the 19 Righteous Fire does get, I'm pretty sure, plus five radius on the next level. <clears throat> and the links I'm currently using for that are Ellie Focus, Righteous Fire, Ink AoE, Efficacy, and Burn Damage. Now, one thing I want to show as well is how easy it actually is to get this character running. So what I'm going to do for you guys is turn off my Purity of Fire, which gives plus 4 max res. And you can see my current uh, fire res is only 79%. So what I recommend for players who don't understand how to play Righteous Fire is basically you need to get to Blood Aqueducts, which is Act 9. Act 9 is going to be your home. The reason why is this is where you can pretty much learn how to play your character. So by turning on Righteous Fire right now without a Stone Golem, you can see I'm degenerating quite a bit. With a Ruby Flask, it goes up, but we're not going to talk about the Ruby Flask, right? Trickster Ascendancy, um, the first two-point Ascendancy that you're going to get is called Patient Reaper, which is 70% increased recovery rate to your life and mana. This basically multiplies your life regen. So if I were to kill one mob here... You can see now, all of a sudden, once this Ruby Flask goes off, like, I can't degen anymore. It, it's like, I now out-regen it. So, by just simply playing around that mechanic, you can immediately start playing Righteous Fire for leveling purposes. As you can see here. So that's one really nice thing. You really do not need much to get the character going. This is also without me running Vitality. I personally don't run Vitality because I prefer a more like aggressive playstyle. That's why I'm running Blasphemy Flammability. You could also run like Blasphemy Vuln or you know whatever it is, Elemental Weakness, um, whatever it is that you choose to use. So I want to talk about some uniques that will greatly uh, help your Righteous Fire play. So the first things to note is uh, let's talk about the shields because there are four shields I recommend. Uh, I haven't really looked at like self-crafting a shield, but there's four uniques that are not terribly difficult to get. So let's talk about each of them one by one. The first one is pretty simple. It's Rise of the Phoenix. It gives you 60 flat life regen, 20 life per second, 5% to max fire res. These are pretty much the main things you're going to look for. If you're looking to help sustain against a righteous fire, this is a pretty solid shield to use. The next one I'm going to go for is On's Heritage. Since we're playing a Trickster, and we're not really, at least I'm not using Endurance Charges, this is the one I've decided to mainly go towards. It has Life Implicit, rolls up to 80 life, gives minus 1 Endurance Charges, and gives you 3 to, ma to uh, all maximum resistance while you have no Endurance Charges. And you have Onslaught while at max Endurance Charges. So with this shield, as I was saying, if you were to, for example, use two Fragility Jewels, which is not even that difficult to get, you just have to Vol Crimson Jewels, um, you can have the Onslaught, which will affect your Scorching Ray, and will just make your build overall feel better. The next one to talk about on there is Saffle's Frame. I am really against Saffle's Frame. Uh, it is not a bad shield. It gives you the four to all max res, which actually includes Chaos Res. Gives you spell damage, which is good for your Scorching Ray. Gives you spell block. But the problem with Saffle's Frame, in my opinion, is you cannot block attacks. And as a Trickster, you don't have that much physical mitigation compared to, for example, a Juggernaut. That's why I kind of stay away from Saffle's Frame. But again, if you're just leveling, you're in Act 9, you happen to find a Saffle's Frame in Act 9 for some reason, nothing should kill you in Blood Aqueducts. 
Uh, the last one to bring up is actually the shield I was aiming for, which is the Oak. Um, the Oak is going to give you the more damage out of all the shields because of the higher life. It's got the 50 extra life compared to a perfect Ons Heritage, which has the 20 life roll plus the 80 life roll. It also gives you 3% life regen per second instead of maximum res, which then gets multiplied by your Trickster Recovery. Couldn't really tell you what's better from personal preference. If you're looking to be more like, you know, you don't really want to die, I would recommend the maximum all res over the life regen. But both of them are totally fine, super good. This one is going to require a prophecy from a spring leaf. So, with that being said, let's talk about something else that's pretty important for Righteous Fire to get it started. Um, the two stats you're really looking to scale is maximum fire resistance and percentage life regeneration. Those are pretty much the two that are extremely important. If we were to open up the passive tree, there's only one max fire res node here, which is barbarism. Uh, barbarism is actually what I wanted to respect to go acrobatics, but again, that's that's just me personally. If you're new, I don't really recommend that acrobatic swap until later on. Basically, what I was going to do is just cut from here and then just go here. So you've got max fire res here, and let's go ahead and talk about the life regeneration that's filtered all over the tree. So starting from Shadow, uh, I do have a build progression guide, which I'll link to in the document. Well, you'll see it in the in the comments below, but I basically have a document for this. So you have life regen, life regen, life regen. Moving across, keep on going, keep on going. Life regen at quick recovery. You then have life regen going down into the Templar side here, but I don't really get this life regen. You have 1% on Sanctity. Coming down, you have Shaper for 1%. You have Percent Life Regen into a Jewel slot. You have Combat Stamina, which is Life Regen leading towards it. Arsonist is 1% Life Regen. Then you've got a Juicy 1.8% Life Regen Warrior's Blood, which also increases Stun Threshold, which is great when you're playing a build with 7,000 life. And then you also have a 0.8% Life Regen. Now, one other really, 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 really important thing to note is with Delve, Righteous Fire was buffed significantly because you can one, roll percentage max life on gear, all pieces, and you can roll 1% of life regen per second on pretty much any armor piece. So if you look, my gloves have 1% regen, my helmet has 1% regen, uh, my boots have 1% regen, I even have a jewel that basically has like 1% regen. You also have your Pantheon. You can use Soul of Arakali, which is reduced damage taken from over time. And you have Soul of Shikari, which is reduced... Well, actually, that has nothing to do with it. You can actually take Aberath, which is reduced fire damage while moving. On top of that, as a Trickster, Prolonged Pain, which is your Cruel Lab node, actually reduces damage taken from over time as well. So with all of that, it actually gets Righteous Fire going very, very easily. Now, one of the other advantages to Trickster is each one of the baby nodes here actually gives you attack speed and cast speed. Casting speed is extremely important for your single target if you plan on using Scorching Ray. Scorching Ray on a Trickster fits hand in hand so well because as we were explaining before how Trickster Righteous Fire is not as upfront tanky as Juggernaut. Like for example, if I were to go up to Minotaur in a 107% extra cold damage map and he slams me with a crit, it's probably gonna hit me for like 95% of my life. Whereas a Jug, maybe it's like 30%. But we have the ability to just simply move and Scorching Gray, move and Scorching Gray, move and Scorch... And this costs... It takes no investment. For a Jug or other classes in general, they have to invest very heavily into movement speed and cast speed and attack speed to get that character going. Also with uh, the Trickster, we get skill effect duration, which allows us to use Smoke Mine. It's kind of like a more try-hard thing, but I personally really like it. Um, smoke Mine is... Where do I even have my Smoke Mine? Here, smoke mine efficacy increased duration, and you could even put your vol skill here, which I have my vol grace here, which gives us like a 12 second vol grace. So overall, it's really nice. Um, as for my weapon, I decided on Balefire. The main reason for Balefire is uh, actually just because it gives a level 25 Scorching Gray. That's literally the pretty much only reason for it. You do not have to use a Balefire by any means. You could just use a six-link Scorching Gray, and since we are a Trickster and we get access to Weave the Arcane, 
we do have a ton more mana compared to other classes so we can actually support a sixling scorching ray rather well which is really nice as well but balefire also gives you this cool looking mtx on your scorching ray which you normally would not have and you don't even have to pay for it so it's a little you know free to play pay to win tip um but yeah i mean overall that pretty much covers majority of what i was talking about um, there are a bunch of other weapons you can use like I was saying so an example would be like a Doriani's catalyst You could target farm at Ziri for this The reason why this is good is simply because of the huge amount of elemental damage You've got the 32% implicit and then I believe it rolls uh, If we look at the LA damage 80 to 100% so you're looking at 132% Elemental damage on it on top of a cast speed and attack speed roll. So that's also something that's really good um as you get further on with your character and you want to kind of push your character a bit further, I want to talk about some a little bit more kind of in-depth things about the character. So number one, uh, crafting with fire fossils on your helmet can result in a nearby enemies have minus nine fire resistance. I also recommend for your helm enchant, if you're going for a bit of the clear speed meta, you do have the ability of using smoke mine increased movement speed. You actually don't even have to run labyrinth for this. You can get lucky like I did and you can use uh, someone in the in the comments is gonna have to type it because I don't remember there's basically a fossil that you can use that like Rerolls lab and chance for you. So you just keep lab and chant lab and chant lab and chant lab and chant, etc um, Next thing I don't know how this box popped up But uh, one of the other things to talk about is your belts So I'm currently using a stygian belt mainly because I never got an elder belt drop Oh, it's called Enchanted Fossil. Thank you, guys. The reason why I recommend for you to look for an Elder Belt and crafting it yourself is if we were to look at Elder Mods here and we look at an Elder Suffix, it is Increased Life Recovery Rate. Remember how earlier in Blood Aqueducts I showed you guys how Patient Reaper works? That's basically a mini Patient Reaper in terms of recovery rate, but at all times for your life regen, which is very, very good. Um, especially for people who kind of need a bit of extra help, you know, running Righteous Fire. This is something to look into. And then one of the last things is probably for your chest piece, what I would recommend personally is also crafting, I believe it's an Elder chess piece because you can roll such crazy life rolls on it. You can get like essentially like 15 to 16% life with like 150 flat uh, along with all of the other stuff that you can roll as well. So anyway, that pretty much covers it. I uh, hope you guys liked the video. If you did, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Really fast, I'm going to go through a quick little overview. Uh, even though this is all posted in the document, I'm just going to explain it really fast. Um, your first uh, first ascendancy is going to be Patient Reaper. That's normal. Then you're going to go into Prolonged Pain for Cruel Lab. Then you're going to go into Swift Killer for Merc Lab. And then for Uber Lab, you want to go Weave the Arcane. You can totally swap these around if you choose to, but I totally recommend the two and then the four point. Um, the big differences between Trickster and Jug is Trickster is a lot more speedy, Jug is a lot more tanky. Of course, you could just build your Trickster to be more tanky and build your Jug to be more damagey. Um, in that scenario, Jug would most likely have better endgame bossing potential, but Trickster should still be able to kill the bosses quicker. But things that are like a lot easier to do, like Shaper and stuff like that, as long as you just know how to move your character around, you can just melt Shaper totally with your Scorching Ray. Uh, remember that to keep up elemental overload, you can simply drop an orb of storms or you can do shield charge with increased critical strikes. Uh, smoke mine is really nice to increase your movement speed. Um, don't forget Vol Righteous Fire is a really nice addition to extra damage over time. When you pop your Vol Righteous Fire, it's going to take 30% of your life. Ah, so champion since it takes... Returns. Welcome home. Since it takes 30% of your life, all you have to do is tap your life flask to kind of boost you back up. Uh, remember that Ons Heritage gives you the Onslaught, so you don't have to worry about running Onslaught on your flasks, which is really nice as well. And then you can also run a Stone Golem to help you along with, you know, some additional assistance um, with your life regeneration. The last thing as well is um, in the document, I do have some leveling uniques posted there. For the most part, um, it's Ash Color Wands, which help with Scorching Ray because... They increase damage over time with, sorry, it increases your ignite damage or burn damage. And then you have two pyre rings that you can run for the leveling process. I recommend leveling with fire trap at the beginning, uh, fire trap with combustion, and then you can just use like control destruction, LE focus. You can choose to scale, for example, uh, damage over time, or you can do upfront damage because it's 200%. When you get to act four, is it? When you get to act four, act five, um, when you basically when you get to level 31, I'd recommend switching over to Scorching Ray because you get all the multipliers for Scorching Ray. So you have like Scorching Ray, Burn Damage, Efficacy, LE Focus. 
Control Destruction, and Swift Affliction. Uh, of course, that would go into Tabula Rasa, which you can farm in Act 9. If you don't have the Tabula Rasa, learn to make do with a 4-link or a plus 1 3-link. Uh, and then, pretty much, get to Blood Aqueduct, get your Righteous Fire character going, have a blast. That's pretty much it. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. And I'll see you boys all tomorrow. Take care, everyone.